The film basement is filmed in sunny West Hartford, Connecticut, in front of a live studio audience. Welcome to the Filmmaker's Basement, where this week both of our movies are on the exact same page. I'm Brandon. Andrew. And we're going to be talking about some of the movies we saw this week, in addition to playing a little game show later on. And the reason I say that is because both of our movies care a lot about uh, multiverse hopping travel around because the movie i saw this week was everything everywhere all at once a movie i could not i did not i wasn't i'll get into it i'm jealous so, i've seen it I is seen it. Mm, i yes so when an interdimensional rap rupture unravels reality an un- unlikely hero must channel her newfound powers to fight bizarre and bewildering dangers from the multiverse as the fate of the world hang in the balance so this is gonna this is gonna be a little bit different for me. I'm not actually gonna talk as much about the plot of the movie, mainly because this movie was absolutely amazing. It's it's literally my new favorite movie now. Mm. My my old movie has been usurped. La La Land is no more. I this is my new favorite movie because this you movie see, is impressive. La La Land. That was my that was my old favorite movie. Really? Yeah. It's ever since I saw it in theaters, I loved that movie. But mm. this takes the cake now. This movie was incredible, and that might that might be an understatement, but. It's just, there's just, like, I don't even know where to start with it, because there's just so much I loved about how the story was told. And I guess that might be a good a good place to start. Um, the movie is actually has, like, a, a, it has, like, a typical three-act structure, but it's different in that every section's a different thing. So the first section is everything, second section is everywhere, the final section's all at once. And it, it, it just really works with what's going on in the movie itself. Because as we kind of, you kind of get in the synopsis there, the unlikely hero is Evelyn. Um, she is the owner of a laundromat along with her husband and her daughter. Um, a laundromat that, by the way, is going horrifically under business and that she kind of feels like a failure for owning and running and blah, 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 blah. Um, so it's kind of watching this mom, essentially, kind of in the beginning, unraveling, which is the everything. She's dealing with all the, all the weight of the world on her shoulders. And then we cut to the second part, which is everywhere, where um, she kind of discovers there's a multiverse out there, and that people can travel between dimensions, and there's this great destroyer called, I gotta look at the name, because it's a lot, Jobu Tubaki, that's coming, and she's essentially this chosen one who's destined to stop Jobu Tubaki. And then, all at once, I'm not gonna spoil, but it's also, it fits very well with the flow of the story itself. Overall, it was very, like... A lot, again, a lot of emotions going on here. It's very heartfelt. Has some of the best action I've seen in any movie. Most the best and most creative action I've seen in any movie in a very long time. Felt very modern. Like this didn't feel like your typical blockbuster movie. It felt like it just felt different. It felt different than a lot of the other movies that are coming out right now. Like when I was writing this uh, up, I was going back and thinking about movies like um, what's it called? Like. Um, oh, Moonfall, or, like, uh, the, that mm. bad Nicolas Cage movie I reviewed back in October, where it's, like, mm. we have all these, like, either bad blockbusters coming out, or, like, really unoriginal, like, action movies, or all that kind of stuff. And along comes this movie, which has this very, like, different feel from everything else. Um, I think that's actually a good way to transition into the style. Um, this movie is just dripping with style in every sense of the word. The costuming's absolutely immaculate, especially for Jobu Tupaki, because her character is kind of like this being who's caught in multiple universes at once. So every now and again, her costume will just change randomly on set. And it's always drastically different from what was happening, what she was wearing previously. Which sounds chaotic, and it is, because that's her character. She's like this destroyer of worlds. But it fits so well with the style of her character. that It, it was just absolute perfection. Same goes for the cinematography. All of the action scenes were legitimately incredible. It reminded me of like old school like Hong Kong action films, the way they were shot. Um, and also just how incredibly creative they were. Um, again, I won't go into a ton of specifics, but in the beginning, there's a fight where one of the people from another multiverse comes in and essentially fights with three security guards with a fanny pack. Mm. And you think it sounds really silly, and it kind of is, but it's also... one. It, it blew my mind the first time I saw it because there was such creativity and like power in the scene. It was just, it was just a lot. Um, and again, there's also a lot of comedy that goes with it. There's a lot of scenes I won't spoil that have a lot of really good comedic action to them. 
It was also incredibly, like, heartfelt and touching. So, again, Evelyn's kind of our main character, and we're kind of following her as we watch, like, this deconstruction of who she is as a woman. Like, what she was before all this started happening to her, and her kind of realizing that, like, everything she's kind of fought for, everything she's done, doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But even with all that, she's still going to put her heart into it and do whatever she can to actually kind of save the world. And live, like, just a really good life. And even especially, again, like I said, after discovering that, her life really doesn't have any meaning or purpose to it. There's no point to her doing anything she does, but that's not, again, the point. The point is kind of making that meaning after you found it. Um, there's a lot of, like, familial drama um, between especially the her husband, who starts off the movie, like, you kind of get, it like, this... He has, he's a character that starts off very different from how he ends. And there's a specific moment that happens where he changes as a character for you, which I thought was incredibly well handled. Um, same thing goes for the daughter. She has a very interesting arc of her, essentially, this, it, I actually, I didn't specify this earlier. Um, her parents are essentially yeah, like first generation immigrants. So she's mm. growing up as a second generation immigrant, dealing with all like the trauma and like, not really connecting with her parents the way that she would like to and them not really understanding her as a person um and even uh, going all past all that like going back to what i was talking about earlier about how this had this was like dripping with style and it felt so different and i think the big reason for that is because it felt like someone's vision like i was talking about earlier this isn't like some sequel to a never-ending franchise franchise like fast and furious or some like moonfall movie that just garbage destruction it felt like somebody who wanted to really tell a story and somebody who put their whole heart and soul into telling that said story and you could feel everyone on this movie like they wanted a part of this they could feel the the creativity like the the action the just the heart and soul that went into making this and it really shows it's genuinely impressive um so yeah, I mean, I don't really want to spoil much else. I think more. I think more of, more than anything, you should go into this blind, not hearing anything else besides this. Just this, the movie was really good, and everyone should see it because it's. We don't really get movies like this all that often. I think it's really important to. Give like give it patronage when something like this does come across. So yeah, highly recommend. This might be my movie of the year. Watch it. I'm definitely excited to see it. Um, I've heard from some other people that were like, oh, I didn't think it was very good. And I'm like, mm -hmm. it's gotten like such good reviews and like Rotten Tomato has it has such a high score. I was like, how did you not like it? And they're I, just like, uh. I don't say this often, but they have garbage taste. <laughs> I'm going to say it <laughs> right now. Because it's, again, it's just a genuinely impressive and creative movie. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it really sets itself apart from the rest of the crowd. And I think, I don't know, I, I, if, they, if they didn't like it, they were missing something from it. <laughs> well, I'm still excited to see it. If I'll see it eventually. I'm just yeah. going through a lot of, I'm, a lot, I'm real busy at the, mo at the moment, so. Very fair. But yes, if you do get the chance, you will have a fantastic time watching this movie. Nice. Um, so it's interesting that you picked that movie, because like you, when you let off the show today, I also saw a multiverse movie. Um... This one's probably, I don't want to say more popular, but more popular uh, yeah. just because it's a Marvel property. Um, I, I went and saw Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I actually saw it opening weekend, so um, it's been a like a week or so since uh, I see it. So it's not really fresh uh, in my mind, but uh, I've seen reviews and like uh, different like takes on it from different people. So, uh, Doctor Strange teams up with a mysterious teenage girl from his dreams who can travel across multiverses to battle multiple threats, including other universe versions of himself, which threaten to wipe out millions across the multiverse. They seek help from Wanda, the Scarlet Witch, Wong, and others. Um, I'm going to be honest, I was expecting a lot more from this movie than what I actually got. Um, because I was told, or I read online, that this movie was going to rival Endgame in the amount of cameos, that really? uh, or the amount of heroes that were going to be in this movie. Um, 
Not true. Maybe Infinity War, because Infinity War had less heroes than Endgame, I think. Pretty sure. I'm not sure. But it was still good. Um, the trailers make it seem different. Like the story is different than it actually was. Um, I was expecting a different antagonist for the movie than what we actually got. And what we actually got made a lot of sense. And I'm kind of glad they went that direction, which was really nice. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch is obviously great uh, because Benedict Cumberbatch is obviously great in just about everything he does. Uh, the new um, hero, America Chavez, which her actress name I am not going to be able to pronounce um, because it starts with an X and I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. Um, but she was really good in it. Uh, it was a good introduction to a new character. Uh, and there was a lot of surprises. There was a few surprises that were in there that I was like, okay, like I could like, this is interesting. I'm interested to see where this is going. And I'm interested to see where they're going to go from here. Cause obviously we're still in phase five, I think for the MCU and it upsets me a little bit. The MCU has upset me a little bit with how they've done a lot of their movies because they came out with the Avengers in 2012. In 2015, they came out with the second Avengers. And then in 2019, they came out, oh no, 2018, they came out with Infinity War and then 19 was Endgame. So when once the Avengers came out, every three years, we've gotten a new team up movie. It's been three years where's my team up movie and they've introduced all these new characters to this marvel universe america chavez the eternals shang chi um and i have we not seen them ever since they were introduced into their movie or tv show so i'm i'm intrigued to know where this is going i have a i have an idea of where the MCU is going from here. I know the big bad, the next big bad is Kang. And he's not, he was introduced in Loki, but he's not going to reappear until Ant-Man, which is next year. Um, but this movie kind of set up a different team up versus movie that I'd be interested to see where they, where they take it. Um, because it would be really interesting to see the battles that would go on between the characters that they would bring in. And I'm kind of want to leave it at that. Cause I don't really want to spoil anything from this movie. Uh, unless you, unless you know Marvel lore, then you probably know where, what I'm talking about and where I'm going with this. Um, but the movie was good. It was a, it was a Sam Raimi directed it, which he directed the original three Spider-Man movies. And uh, he's obviously a horror director and i went into this thinking it was a horror movie and it was actually tagged as the first marvel horror movie it was an action horror or an adventure horror or whatever yeah, that it was. was like the one thing that was like getting me really excited for it not yeah. only that but it seemed like it had elements of cosmic horror in it which seemed like a really cool proposition and it, it does have a lot of horror elements in it it has a lot of sam raimi horror in it um I'll tell you, Bruce Campbell shows up, obviously. It's Sam Raimi. He was going to show up eventually, um, which was kind of cool to see. Uh, his bit was funny, uh, as any Marvel movies, you know, they're going to have funny bits to it. Um, but the element of horror in the movie was really well done um, and kind of kept you on the edge of your seat as to, like, what's going to happen next. So... I like that bit of it. I was expecting a little bit more horror than what we got. Uh, I wasn't expecting like blood, gore, violence and stuff like that, like an R rating, but I was definitely expecting um, more jump scares, more like um, creepy elements uh, in this movie. Um, but overall, it was a good movie it wasn't a real good Marvel movie because obviously there's 
like it's that's probably not in my top five of Marvel movies, which is where I was kind of hoping it was going to be. So would you say it's better as almost a standalone? Like, just no. on its own? Okay. Because this sets up a lot of different ways that they can go. Like, if they just put this movie out as a standalone, it would be very confusing. And they, they didn't follow up with anything, it would be very confusing. Um, this movie set up a lot of different directions that they can go with the cinematic universe. So... Um, so yeah, I mean, unless if they didn't do that, then maybe it would be a better movie, I guess. I'm not sure. I don't really know. But like knowing what I know now and knowing some of these characters and wondering where other characters are from the MCU, I was expecting a little bit more. So, but overall, I would go see it. I mean, I would go see it anyway, just because it's Marvel and I'm going to always give Marvel my money. So... I'm curious about the different kinds of horror that are present in there. Because what I, my expectation was it was going to be a little bit Lovecraftian almost. Like that kind of eldritch horror. That's what I was expecting from the trailer. Me too. And what I got from the trailer is not what I got from the movie. Which is what I like that Marvel okay. hasn't done a lot. I've complained a number of different times about how Marvel spoils things in trailers. And it shows up in their movie and that's just kind of how like it you, like you, you it doesn't leave you guessing this movie left me a little like like thinking in my head okay. like cuz i saw the trailer and i was like oh this is not like what i was expecting at all and it was a it was a good reaction mm -hmm. i was just expecting a little bit more which i think by now marvel the mcu has been a thing for the last 14 years yeah. I think everyone expects something more like you you always see these articles about like this could happen in this movie this could happen in this TV show this yeah. could this person could show up this person could show up and like it never it never turns out that way yeah so I mean when you think you're about always it, going to leave disappointed because people on the internet will always try to hype things up that are right. comic accurate but they don't actually do the comic accurate stuff yeah you also have to think that Marvel at this point is for lack of a better term, kind of typecast into what they can do. Mm. Like, they can't really stray far outside of, like, the action comedy angle. They can't really stray too far out of that. Uh, and they did stray like that. outside of that action. I mean, there is comedy, there is action in this movie, but there's yeah. also a horror element, which was a nice addition to yeah. um, the MCU. And hopefully they can do something else, like they can give us... Um, I don't know, like it's it's kind of what I was expecting from Morbius, um, <laughs> yeah. But I didn't get that from Morbius at all, because mm. uh, Morbius should have been a horror movie. Venom should be a horror movie, um, and who knows? Maybe we'll get like I'm, I've been trying to think of like a another character like off the top of my head that's like horror related, but I can't think of one. Honestly, I'm, I don't know. I, I wouldn't know personally, but I'm sure there's a ton of villains out there you could. Maybe, but maybe oh yeah, really good I mean, story I didn't see New Mutants, and New Mutants isn't part of the MCU, but I know that that had some horror elements to it. Yeah, didn't that so. get canceled like immediately? No, they What's came that? out the movie. Oh, okay, it Thought got it was... pushed because of COVID. Oh, okay. But it came out like 2020, like end of 2020. But I think gotcha. it came out as a digital release. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that that wraps up our multitude, our multiverse, multitude, whatever journey. <laughs> oh God, my brain's fried. Oh man. Well, well, moving on from that segment, let's go into Pilot Wings, everyone's favorite game show. Okay. So. Andrew's played this game a million times, but for those who haven't, Pilot Wings is the game show where I pitch Andrew three show log lines. Two of them are real shows that actually got pitched, and one of them is something that I made up, and it's up to Andrew to guess which is the one that I, I created. So, number one. Michael always had an eye for art, but when a trip to a museum brings him face to face with a talking painting in need of help, he'll have to acquire an ear for it as well. Based on the French format, and I'm going to butcher this, Le Homme Que by Le Pinteurs. Two. 
based on the web series of the same name, centers on a woman, Nan, and her dog. The twist is, it features a modern family-style confessional device for the dog. And three. Over the course of Max and Paige's wedding rehearsal dinner, their eclectic family and friends give Toast recalling anecdotes about the couple. But flashbacks reveal that Toast don't always get it right, and as the comedy explores the real story of their complicated, funny, and relatable road to marriage. Alright, Andrew, out of those three, which one do you think is the fake one? Huh. Yeah? Um, interesting. Um, so the first one, it's, uh, that sounds so weird, Mm -hmm. but like, you have the French title from, I guess, a show or something. But you could also be making that up and just saying something in French. I also don't know French, so I kind of wish I knew French so I could know like what that said. Uh huh. Um, I'm going to skip the second one because I feel like I've heard of that. Like, I vaguely remember seeing, like, a dog in front of a camera, and it's narrating. And I can't think of the name. Mm -hmm. And then the last one... The last one just sounds like it could be a movie. Like, it doesn't sound like that that would be, like, an actual series because it sounds like it would be way too short it's just over the course of the rehearsal dinner so like the whole season or like the whole show is over the course of the rehearsal dinner seems weird i'm gonna go with that one is fake the third Mm -hmm. one the third one unless you're in yeah unless you're tricking me with that first one so the first one was the fake one. I picked that last one because I had ma- I had made up um, something very similar to that earlier in the season. Mm. Similar concept, except you said that one sounded so fake it couldn't be real. Oh, it didn't okay. sound like they have enough material to go with. So I was like, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw him up with this because I know he'll go for that thinking there's no way that could possibly have enough material to go for it. I want to say something really quick. Yeah. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> I don't think you have the second one's answer in complete white. Ah, uh, shoot, you're right. I see what you mean. <laughs> Darn I it. I didn't know if it was my computer screen. So like, cause like I got a new, P- I got a new monitor yeah. and I was like, wow, that's really, I could really see that on this monitor. No, so I was like switching over to my other monitor to see if I could still see it. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, I can still kind of see it. It might be on his end. So yeah. So I knew the second one was fake. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> I was having a similar problem with the third one earlier. I just didn't notice I had done it with the second oh. one, too. But yeah, the, the, the second one's called Downward Dog, and yeah. it got a single season, as you can imagine. I do remember seeing, like, that, me saying that I do remember show. seeing, like, the, the dog with the webcam and then the narration. Yeah. I do, that is a memory in my head. Um, what yes. was... The third the... one's called Toast. Toast. And it was passed over. It was passed over now. Nobody wanted that. Now, what's the fir- where'd you get the first one from? Oh, that just I just thought it sounded weird. What's the French translation? Uh, what did I? I don't even remember what I did. I think I just plugged in something about a painting. Let me see. I don't quite remember what I called it. French to English. The man who... <laughs> <laughs> Is yeah, this that a PG was... series or no? That's See, not a that PG was, word. That was me lying there. I remembered exactly what that was. <laughs> I do love putting my raunchy titles. Hopefully together. nobody from uh, Quebec or France uh, mm. watches our podcast because <laughs> Le Homme qui basse le, les peintures is a not a, is not <laughs> that's a naughty sentence. <laughs> 
man. But I actually would kind of watch a show like that. Something about that sounds weird. I'd be interested. Not not about the the title part, but the actual plot itself. Oh, okay. I was like, I man, was like, man who can hear a pla- a painting. Yeah, it sounds like uh, have, they have, could have wait. some good content. What did you say? What a man what who can you... hear a painting. Like it just starts talking to him. Oh yeah. Well, okay. there's, there's something there. I'd watch. I'd give that a, at least yeah. an episode. Um, so yeah, funny. that was Pilot Wings this week. Hopefully next week I won't make a stupid mistake like forgetting to make it white enough. <laughs> um, but moving on, let's go into some of the movies that are coming out. Um, and we're towards the end of the month, so there's not too much popping up. I know you have something for the week after next. That I don't see, even. But... Oh, Jurassic World. Oh, I was think I was thinking Maverick, Top Gun. Oh yeah, that is that's this week. Is it this week? Oh sh- no, it's, no, it's next week according to IMDb. Is it? I thought May it was. May 27th. Oh, today's Friday. Oh my god. I don't know why I thought today was not Friday. I, was, I thought today was like Tuesday or something. That's honestly. Oh, rude. Uh, Maverick and the Bob's Burgers movie comes out yeah, next I week. Think, again, another one I figured you'd really enjoy. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't even know what came out this week. Nothing, actually. Uh, there's no. a movie that came out this week that you might like. I, no, I'm not interested. You're not going to go see Men? No, I don't, oh. I don't care for that. It just looks, I don't know, that movie does you not like horror movie. movies. Yeah, I've seen trailers for this one, and that's not my kind of I've horror. seen trailers everywhere. Yeah, they've been playing them all, all around. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to Nope. I'm excited for that movie. Mm. That movie looks awesome. So when that movie comes out, I'm going to be losing Is it. Is there a trailer for that already? Yes, there's been a bunch. I have to watch. Well, really I haven't seen cool. it. It's really cool. Um, yeah, so that I'm really looking forward to that. That's a while July. from now, isn't it? Yeah, it's that's it's a July. it's a while. Oh no, it's in, yeah, it is in July. Yeah, Shoot. it's July. Yeah, n- no, Lightyear and uh, Jurassic World Dominion are next month. Yeah, those um, I'm, I'll definitely be seeing Lightyear. I know that much. There is curious. a movie that I'm interested in, but I don't know if I'm gonna have the gallstones to go watch it. Um, what is it? The Black Phone. Oh, I've been seeing trailers for this. It it looks weird. It's and a, like it's kind of uncomfortable good. for me, honestly. I don't uncomfortable? Know. Yeah, something about it makes me really uncomfortable. Yeah, Ethan Hawke portrays a, a real creep. Mm. And I'm a little interested. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely feel from the trailer. Like he has it he comes on very strong. Yeah. So it could be could be interesting. I I might give it a shot, but I know what I'm about at this point. <laughs> um, I still have a bunch of movies I need to catch up on anyways. I still I haven't seen too. The Northman. No, I I neither have I. It. So, uh, I think there's movies from April that I haven't seen. A Firestarter, which I'll probably want to see too. No, I won't that see that. Right. Um, Ambulance, I haven't seen. Uh, yeah, I, won't you, see that one. I don't think you've seen Cow. No, I don't. It's not playing anywhere near me. I, I do want to see it. I've heard it's really sad. Which it's got is really an 80 upsetting. on Metacritic. People, no, that's the thing, though. People like, keep saying it's good, but it's really depressing. Uh, let's see. I did go see Father Stew. I wasn't going to review it. It's mm. not worth me reviewing. That's there was fair. a bunch of, like, it's a movie about a guy who goes from, like, his, um, mm-hmm. uh, like, bad boy lifestyle to becoming a priest. There was a oh. lot of... Oh, you know, so you know what's funny about that movie? What? So, me and my girlfriend went to a confirmation recently, um, just ran a confirmation in NYC, in New York, and as we were going into a church, there was a big poster for Father Stu just chilling there. Do you know what Father Stu is? It's a Mark Wahlberg movie about Mark Wahlberg being a priest. I know, it's the movie I was yeah. talking about. Yeah, I, I, I thought I was, I thought I said the wrong thing at first. No, I was but, wondering why the, the, I was wondering why the church had a poster for Father I, Stu. Exactly, why do they have it? It's I'll let you know thing. right now, there was a lot of nut jobs in that movie theater when really? I went and saw it. Yeah, like religious nut jobs. Mm. Like, I was expecting a movie about a guy who goes from, you know, his bad guy lifestyle, like a criminal mm. lifestyle, to, to obviously to a priest. Yeah. I was expecting not as much religious religion as I was. I don't know why I went into this movie thinking I wasn't going to see as much religion as I was yeah. like, as, as there was, but there was a lot of religion. And also it was a lot of older people and they wouldn't that shut up. That also kind of tracks. Like, it seems like an older person movie. Yeah. But uh, the other movie that I need to go see is Memory with Liam Neeson. 
Oh, another Liam, Liam Neeson, Neeson movie. <laughs> I am a sucker for Liam Neeson assassin movies. So. Fair enough, dude. Fair enough. <laughs> and then I think that's it. I think after those two, mm. I'm caught up. And then The Northman, so three. No, oh, no. And then Everything Everywhere All Everything once, Everywhere. So and trust me, the second you get the option to watch that movie, <sighs> see it. It is so worth it. I don't it's even It's really weird, but it's so worth it. I think once Maverick comes out and Bob's Burgers, I think a lot of those movies are going away. So I'm going to have to wait until they're on demand. Yeah, that's fair. Be like that. All right. Let's, on that note, why don't we move into our outro? Uh, Andrew, do you have anything you want to plug this week? No. I'm going to do classic Brandon move and plug the movie I saw. Everyone watch everything everywhere all at once. <laughs> this movie was magical. <laughs> Um, definitely uh, deserves a lot more credit than I think it's getting at the moment. If you want to go help out our Lord and Savior, uh, Jimmy Lucars, with mm-hmm. his project of Police 3, I'll plug that. Because, there you go. Because um, he has a GoFundMe page? I think I believe so. We always mess this up. I Every mean, single time. I mean, we really time. should do more research I think, on this. I think it's a GoFundMe. Uh, it's not a Kickstarter. I know that. I pretty sure it's GoFundMe, but I, it's still up, I think. Um, and it's in post-production and he's actually, he called me earlier today and he's actually working on submitting it to film festivals. Yes. Which um, is very exciting. He's, so he's seen... submitting it to a festival yeah. here in Florida. Mm. So hopefully it gets picked up by them and yeah, hopefully. we'll be able it's... to go show it. It's top. It's real. It's it's Did really good. Did you watch? Good. Have you seen it? I've seen some cuts from it. It looks really. I don't want to see. I don't want to see it until it's finished. Yeah. So yeah, it's def- definitely will be worth it, and I'm very excited to see that thing come out. Mm-hmm. I am too. Yes. Alrighty. Well, thank you all for listening to this episode of Filmmakers Basement. Um, I'm Brandon. Major. And we will see y'all next time.